morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. And today I am working on transfers. I'd like to show you different ways that you can do transfers, but I'd like to simplify it and let you decide which method you would rather use. And I'll show you three different examples. The most common reason that people use transfers is for the script, the writing or the text. And you want to make a copy from your photocopier. Now I'm going to show you how to use a laser copy and how to use one from your inkjet printer. You do want to make sure you've got the script flipped because when you do a transfer everything is going to come out backwards so the very first thing you want to do is make a copy and you can go to the graphics fairy there are digital collage sheets that you can purchase from Etsy and download right to your computer and print them out but you could also take a calendar page and copy it in your copier but then when you go to print it out, just make sure you do a flipped image. If you'd like to use an inkjet print, which means it comes right from your printer, which is more than likely an inkjet, unless you specifically bought a laser printer, you would want to put your copy in the oven, set the oven to 200 degrees. Once it reaches 200 degrees, leave the copy in there at 200 degrees for 20 minutes then you can take it out and let it cool off inkjet prints tend to bleed and smear and run and putting it in the oven like that will be the first step it's really the only step for this purpose that you'll need in order to keep it from running i personally prefer the laser prints because they do not run or smear at all the ink is waterproof and that means you would just take the copy that you made with your own printer to the copy center. And the self-serve copy machines are all laser copiers. So you can use one of those to make copies of all of your images. You can experiment with both of these methods to see which one you like better. And then cut out the size that you'll need for the project that you're working on. Okay, now I can pick up the pace a little bit more. <laughs> now we just want to add, that is matte Mod Podge that I just showed you. And just put one coating, thoroughly cover the whole surface of your image. You then want to flip the image over and place it onto your surface. And this is bare wood. And you just press out all of the glue underneath. And you can use a spoon. When that paper was completely flat, I wet my fingertips. I just ran them under water, wet my fingertips, and carefully went over the top. You don't want to tear this paper, but the water helps the paper weigh down onto that surface. It weighs it down and gives you an even better coverage. And once I was done with that side, I flipped this over and I'm using the laser print on this side. You can let transfers dry for five to six hours, even overnight. I prefer to put my project in a cold oven and set it to 175. When it reaches 175 degrees, I turn the oven off and leave the item in it for at least one hour. Part of that is because I'm impatient, but the other reason is because it seems to bake the inks right onto your surface. I will show you the end result of all of these three projects when I'm done, but I used my favorite chalk paint over this metal pitcher, and I'm using a gloss heavy gel by Liquitex to do this particular transfer. And you notice that I did copy this and I reversed the image. I did make a laser copy, but I also want to go around these edges and I want to take away the excess paper, but I want to tear it smoothly. I don't just want to cut it. So I did the same trick that I do with napkins, which is took a very fine point paintbrush, 
wet it, just water, and went around the edges just to weaken the fibers of that paper and pull away the edges that I don't need. It is important that you use the store-bought chalk paint. I know people try to make their own, but when they do that, they're normally using an additive inside their own latex or acrylic paint. Latex and acrylic paints should not go in the oven, but the other thing is they are nowhere near as porous as the chalk paint and I've experimented a lot. The chalk paint is the best surface for transfers. Now that's just my opinion and I have not yet tried milk paint. Some people swear by a milk paint for this also. Now I'm doing the same exact steps that I did before and putting the, the only difference here is I am using a laser print, but I'm using the gel medium to do this transfer, which came out beautifully. You'll see that in a little while too. But this will also go in the oven. And by the way, I did use two coats of this folk art home decor white chalk paint. And now I'll show you how I did a transfer over a bottle. I also used a laser print and this is Martha Stewart's paint. Martha makes quite a few different paints. You want to make sure you get the one that's called Martha Stewart's multi-purpose craft paint. It can go in the oven. They recommend that, as a matter of fact, in order to cure it. They say you can use it in the dishwasher, run it through the dishwasher once you've done this. I've never tried it because I'm too afraid to. If any of you have ever tried to do that, let me know how it turned out. <laughs> and I'm also using a laser print on this and following all of the same steps. And again, I'm just showing you the different surfaces. And I'm going to put this in the oven once I've wet this. And I'll do the other side too. And I'm going to put this in the oven and I'll show you how all three pieces look when we're done. And I'll repeat that. I used a baking pan. I covered it with aluminum foil and so that nothing would stick. I then added parchment paper over that. I put it in a cold oven and set the oven to 175 degrees. When it reached 175, I turned the oven off and I let these items stay in there for an hour and then took them out to let them cool off. Now everything's out of the oven and cooled off and I took my wooden box and a sponge brush and I saturated and you really do want to saturate the back of the paper. Then take a rough but clean wet rag or cloth, terry works really well for this, terry cloth, and rub as much of the paper away as you can with that and also use your finger. Apply the right amount of pressure. I found that sometimes you can pull everything away, so you do want to go kind of on the firm side but not too firm. This was the laser copy side, and you can see how it comes out a little on the sheer side. That's because there's no paint and we worked on raw wood. And you just want to pull away any of these edges, or you can use a nail file and go right across those edges. The other side is the inkjet side. At first I was a little worried that it ran or it bled, but it, it did come out fine. So same steps, just the sponge brush, dampen it, then use the cloth to pull that paper away so that you reveal the image underneath. And I am repeating all of these steps just so that you get the general idea of how this is done. This is now cooled off out of the oven. This is the chalk paint over metal with a laser transfer and I used a gel medium to do this transfer. And this is by far my favorite one. This is why I love chalk paint and why I love the laser prints. And again, I just wet the image. Now that this has come out of the oven and cooled off, I wet it. I peeled most of the paper away with the rag and now I'm using my thumb. 
and we'll move on to the glass bottle. And all of the steps again are the same. This came out of the oven. I cooled it off or let it cool off. Then I saturated the paper and I started with my thumb on this. I could feel the paper was going to come away a bit easier on the bottle and used the rag and took the paper away from this to reveal the image underneath. Now this is how the bottle looks after the transfer over this pearl paint. And you can see up at the top of the bottle there are some chips there, which is another reason I'm not crazy about doing the transfers over that paint. Here is another bottle that started out clear. I used chalk paint on it. I used an image from the Graphics Fairy and made a laser copy of it and followed all of those same steps. And you can see there's quite a difference here. And here are how our completed pieces look. This is the laser print. And on the other side, you can see that the inkjet print is not as intense. And here was our upcycled liquor, liquor bottle. <laughs> and you can see that even though we used a laser print, over this type of paint it just didn't come out nearly as intense i also i'm not crazy about that chipping that occurred up there especially after i took the time to put this in the oven you can see why i prefer the laser image transfer method over chalk paint and here's how our butterfly came out over this watering can and i did use a laser print but i also used a gel medium over the chalk paint and in next week's video, I'm going to show you how to decoupage around all of these surfaces with the exception of the upcycled liquor bottle that had the text on it. I simply put a top coat or a varnish over that and left it just as it was. And the decoupage will cover up any of these areas where you can see a line. And you'll be able to see how decoupage and transfers really work well together. And just a few other tips. You may want to just practice on pieces of wood like this. You can find these in the craft store. I'd go with a much lighter colored paint. Transfers work better on lighter colors. And use different paint to experiment. You can use gesso, the Martha Stewart paints, milk paints, and of course my favorite chalk paint. You can take any old liquor bottle. I have a link below on how to thoroughly remove the label and all of the residue. You can do that within 15 minutes so, so that you can start with a clean surface and you can use a colored liquor bottle because you're going to paint it anyway. And as far as experimenting on metal goes, every single can in my house had these ridges on it. This is not the best surface to do a transfer on. Uh, which is one of the reasons that I use that old watering can. So if you can find a smooth metal can or a smooth metal surface to practice on, that would also be a big help. And both the multi-surface paints and the chalk paints work over metal. Okay, friends, that is our video for the week. I hope I was able to demystify the process of transfers a little bit for you. Please feel free to ask me any questions or make some comments. I'm curious about the milk paint, if anyone's done any transfers over that. And Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. If you like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put out a new video. In the meantime, thank you so much for subscribing. I look forward to hearing from you guys. I will see you next week with another video. Bye-bye.